Hi guys. It's me, Patricia. I'm here to talk to you about things that you have to do when you become an adult or things that you may have not known about and need to do them now. Okay, so um, let me tell you what's been going on and then we can get into it. Um, on the April 23rd, my husband had knee replacement surgery. And if you've watched anything on YouTube about it, you know it's just unbelievably difficult. So, um, <laughs> he, um, he was out of it for about three days. He was supposed to come home, um, uh, Friday morning and he did not get discharged until Saturday afternoon. And what we found out is that the anesthetic that he got was too strong. And so he does have to do this again. And, um, so we're going to have to remember that and ask them not to use so as much of the medication at that point. Um, another thing that happened, um, my daughter got COVID and that's all I'm going to say about that. She's done. She's over. She's free. Um, Anyway, in all of the appointments that he had and all of the physical therapy that he had the therapist coming to our house, I was watching all this stuff so I could get him to do it later. He like was completely non-compliant. Um, so I, I just, I said, fine, whatever. If you're not going to do it, you're not going to do it. Okay. So, um, there was that. I went to get my new glasses and uh, I was told I cannot have contact lenses because I have macular degeneration. And this is um, a darkening of the retina right in the center. And um, it's just going to get darker and bigger and eventually I will not be able to see straight. I will have to look through my the corner of my eye to see things. There is a surgery that can help, but uh, yeah, God, I can't even think of somebody putting a thing in my eye. But anyway, so um, so that was that. So I got two new pairs of glasses, but no contact lenses. Um, when my husband came home from the hospital, we had to make sure that there were no impediments to him traversing through the house. So we had to move a bunch of things into this room and then my storage room right there got a bunch of stuff in it. So there we are. That's what we're doing. Okay. So, um, lots of things going on, not a whole lot of time, but very much very depressed. So I'm sorry I haven't made a video in so long, but that would be the reason. I got severely depressed. I was seeing a therapist with the VA and um, yeah, that has not worked out because when my daughter got COVID, I had to stop. So now I have to call her back and try to make new appointments. And I just have not done yet, that yet. And I need to do the same thing with my doctor, my PC, primary care doctor. So, um, anyway, so that's what's that. Um, this place is a mess. Um, we're down to one dog and one cat and they're doing great. Um, uh, the cat has a little bit of mange, but she doesn't scratch. I don't know why she has it. She's not scratching or anything. So anyway, they'll figure it out. Um, as we are going through all this process, the money I had set aside so we could go on a vacation next fall has been forfeited for bill paying. So I will have to restart trying to save it up. I am trying to get a job. I've had several job interviews and nothing yet. And I know it's, I know part of it is because of my age. Um, they think I don't know how to do things. Um, it's like they know I show up, but they don't think I'll do, do the work. So I was really not real happy about that. This thing on my hair is pissing me off. Okay, so anyway. All right. So, um, there's a lot of things that you need to do. Um, your transportation. Transportation-wise, you really need to make sure you get a tune-up 
every once in a while and make sure that you get an oil change every three months. Um, sometimes when they use synthetic oil, there is a, a longer period of time. You should get it done every three months or every 3,000 miles. But with synthetic oil, you can go five years. I mean, five months <laughs> and 5,000 miles. That's bad. So, um, yeah, try to gauge that like that. Um, let's see. Um, always check your window washer fluid and check your your um, wipers. Here we know exactly when it's going to start raining. It happens in June and then it goes through the beginning of July and then it just stops. And then we don't have rain for the next eight months. So, um, so that's neat. That's really needed is to make sure that you have everything ready because if you have to work or if you have to go somewhere, you're going to need to have, um, somebody, I mean, you're going to need to have your visibility out your front and back windows. Um, so, um, now let's get on with it, shall we? Okay. This is an iron. I know many of you know what it was. I'm not saying you didn't. Just saying this is mine. Okay. Now this is a Rowenta made in Germany. I'm not sure if this is the one I got from my mom's house or if this one I already had. But anyway, um, this has several uses. Okay. Um, so on the on the dial in the middle, you can't see it, but there's d different um, temperatures. It doesn't actually say numbers. It just has one dot, two dots, three dots, and where it says three dots, it is completely red. So that is like really, really hot. Um, also with the the red, let me see if I can hold that up. Yeah, there. With the red, it also has a thing for the steam. Now, to get the steam, you open this little reservoir right there. Okay? Right there. And then you fill it with water. I think there's a little thing there. Um, and then you close it up. And you say minimum, maximum, or self-clean. I'm not sure what self-clean does. I've never used it. So, hmm, I guess it's as good as mine. Um, this one is mist, and this is all out wet. Okay? It's, and this is raining. This is just misting a little bit. Um, now, the reasons you would need um, an iron have diminished in recent years because everything is, um, you know wrinkle-free, wrinkle-resistant, um, polyester. You really should not do any kind of stretching fabrics on the on the dryer. You sh I mean, the iron, you shouldn't use that. If you need to um, get the wrinkles out of something, you either need to steam it, which this is not perfect for, but you can use it. Just don't ever touch it to the fabric because the fabric will shred and melt. It just doesn't like hot, hot, hot temperatures. Um, the other thing you can do is get a wet washcloth and the item you need uh, to be de-wrinkled. And you put them both in a hot dryer. And the steam will build up in the dryer from the washcloth. And it will get the wrinkles out of your dress or shirt or whatever it is. Um, so that's what that is. I'm not even going to show you how to iron. It's basically, if this is my ironing board or my table, you just go back and forth, okay? Go into the corners, go into the crevices, you know, and use this other hand to move things around. That actually will help a lot in um, getting things done correctly and not burning things. Another thing you can use this for is ironing on patches or the, uh, little designs. I have a, um, I have a peacock and I have to do it inside out because the top of it has um, like glitter or something and I'll melt it all off and it'll, it'll just be a disaster. So I'm going to have to do it inside out and put the iron on thing in, inside the pant leg and hope that I get it in the right place. Yay. That's it. 
um, then you iron it and iron it and iron it without burning the fabric. If you can do that, then it'll stay. It won't stay forever. So if you ever get a, a purse from me and something's not sticking, let me show you what I use for that. Well, I used to have some. One of the things you can use is tacky glue. I love Aileen's tacky glue. It is awesome. This stuff is great. Um, the other thing is the E6000 glue. Now, what happened to that stuff? Okay, I don't know. This is a mess because everybody put everything in here to get it out of Bob's way. And I got to tell you, Bob has not been out to the backyard since he got home from the hospital. So, um, also, I don't know if I mentioned we got a guinea pig, but we did. And um, it has been really good for Bob because the cage is near where he sits in the living room, which he does a lot. And um, every time it squeaks, Bob, Bob is over there talking to it, you know, and squeaking louder. And um, yeah, so he's having a good time with it. Sometimes he feeds the guinea pig, you know, gives him some hay. Um, so yeah, so that's it. So these are my green glasses. I know they don't look green, but there's the green. There's the green. Well, I don't know if you can see it. It's just the sides and the inside of the lenses is green. And it looks kind of blue in this light. I don't know. But I can't see without my glasses. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, uh, most of the time, you don't need an iron. You can just put whatever it is in the dryer for a few minutes and it'll come out nice and unwrinkled. Um, if it has been like stuffed down in a, in a laundry basket or something and you pull it out and you go, damn, this has so many wrinkles. By that time, those wrinkles have set in. You definitely need to either wash it again and dry it again, or you need to put that wet washcloth in the dryer with it. Um, so I was going to go to my BA appointments for the Disabled Veterans Association because now that I've got this eye thing and the hearing thing, now I find out that they ugh, they gave the wrong name. So I'm still trying to figure out what's going on with this. So um, let you know, keep you apprised, but yeah, I don't know right now. Um, so one thing I wanted to show y'all, and I'm not doing it today, but I will do it in the next one, is how to fold a bottom sheet. It's super easy and it should be like a breeze to do. But lots of people have so much trouble, they get tangled in it. And, and um, yeah, me and my sisters had to share the sheet to get it right. And so like e either one of us would hold an end and then we'd agree to fold it a certain way and then we go, you know, and tuck it in so it's inside itself so that it just rolls up really nice. And um, yeah, I don't do it perfect because I don't really care. I'm just going to change my sheets next week anyway. So um, yeah, I don't really care. Um, but I mean, as long as it's flat when I'm, when I'm folding it so it can fit in the space provided in the linen closet. Okay, what else happened? Let me see. Oh yeah, the pool busted open. So that was fun. We had to fix that. And then the, um, it was still leaking a little and it keeps leaking out and I can't find it. And I have put patches like everywhere I thought it was. And I still am getting my water going down every few days. So. And it's expensive to keep filling it up. So, I mean, I'm just so, so frustrated. Um, I know first world problems, right? So anyway, um, another thing I wanted to talk to you about was organizing and uh, decluttering. If you have a lot of stuff, I would recommend trying a declutter thing on Pinterest. There's a lot of them and I found some of them are very, very helpful health helpful so I've started to do it a little bit but then when my husband had a surgery and we didn't realize the scope of it um, yeah everything's still in this room so I even have the dirty laundry basket from the bathroom in here and that just grosses me out like no end so um, but it won't fit anywhere else 
and we had it in the hallway before, but oh, I'm not going to do that anymore. We did get some badass lights in our hallway, um, recessed lighting, and we put daylight um, LED lights in them. It's super bright when you turn those lights on. You can see everything, including the dust. But um, anyway, so um, that's what's going on right now. Uh, we're just dealing with mess and trying to keep the kids fed on all these high prices. Um, I would recommend that you do not try to warm your car up unless it's older than 25 years old because you don't need to. Fuel injection means that the fuel is already being pumped in. You don't have to warm it up. Um, so yeah, don't leave your car running in the driveway while you go back in the house to do something. Okay. It's just, I mean, stop the car, go in. A car sitting in idle for very long uses more gas than the car that's just being started up twice. So don't do that. Okay. Um, another thing you're at a grocery store and whoever's with you wants to stay in the car, open the windows. Give them the keys, but open the windows and tell them don't run the air conditioner. <coughs> Sorry. I have buku allergies. And my pool is full of June bugs at this point, so I don't even want to clean it. Because as soon as they dry off, they start flying around again. And they're just going to go right back in. I hate them things. Anyway, I don't know what June bugs are good for. Um, nobody in our area knows what to do with them except kill them, and I, I just, I'm not doing that. Um, I think I may get a light for outside, and then <laughs> get that to attract the bugs away from the swimming pool. Um, okay, so everything said is already said. Um, Okay, so I really want y'all to take care of yourself. Coronavirus is not gone, obviously, if my daughter got it uh, two or three weeks ago. Um, she's fine. She mostly sounded like she had a summer cold, so um, I don't think there's anything, you know, with that. But, yeah, she's back in the family, and I don't have to take her food to her anymore or, you know, do her eardrops without you know, coming in the room, just trying to do it up in the air, so I don't want to do it. So, we're doing our airdrops, close quarters again. Um, you know, I'm looking around for things to say, but I don't even know where to start. This place is such a freaking mess. And I guess my daughter cleaned out her room and she left all her stuff here. So I got a big old pile of her things. So, just too much, I'm telling you. I got an extra chair and it's just sitting there and I feel bad for for the woman who gave it to me because she has since passed and these chairs are very important to me but they're collecting junk in both rooms that they're in. They don't fit, they don't both fit in one room. Oh, they do but not with the guinea pig there and I don't have any other room to put it because it was in the middle of this table here when um, my husband was not able to ambulate well without a walker. Now he walks with a cane or without one, however he feels. And, uh, sorry, I was just messing with my hair ties. Um, so, um, yeah, we were able to move the guinea pig out because it was smelling up this room because it's so small. And, um, okay, so that little bit of tan paint right there. I ran out of paint. I had gotten the little one, the quart, and yeah, I, it didn't go that far. So I did manage to get it all the way to, to the side of the door frame, but I still have to go above it. And I don't need a whole quart for that, so I don't know what to do. I'm just... But anyway, so as soon as I can get that done, I already painted the wall in front of me, so that's a nice uh, gray-blue which is what the rest of the house is painted. That wall is tan and that wall is tan. But we had another problem crop up yesterday. Okay, so we knew we had had termites in our bathroom. 
and we stopped seeing evidence of them. And we wondered where the hell they had gone. Well, guess what? I found them. No, actually, my daughter found them. She was messing with the my kids when they do the dishes. They like to have the other, you know, brother or sister. They like to have their sibling in the kitchen with them, talking to him and having fun, and just conversing. And um, so she was sitting in the doorway and she kind of like started falling off the chair she was sitting in or the stool and she grabbed the door frame and it sort of came off in her hands because the termites are now in that door frame, which is right near the bathroom. So it makes sense, but is not good. So I went online and I tried to find somebody's email so I could tell them what was going on. I have not received anything back from them yet, but when I do, I'll let you know. Termites can destroy your whole house and uh, they have to like drill through walls and drill through concrete and all kinds of stuff just to get the termites to either leave or die. So we're hoping that will work. Um, if not, we have to replace a lot of crap in this house. It's going to be bad. So, um, that's our next thing to go wrong. Okay. So, um, I hope that everybody does well and that you keep yourself safe. Coronavirus is still with us. Uh, wear your mask. Um, don't go out in public unless you have to. Don't go into a building without a mask. Um, most buildings are still asking and businesses and government officers are still telling you you have to wear them so it's normal for us to just put it on or have have one in the car just keep it in the car so we're doing that and then um the other thing that we're doing is keeping our distance from people and that's really hard like in walmart especially there are people everywhere and when you stay like six paces back with your cart because you need to get through that aisle um, you're just standing there because you need to get through that aisle, but the lady in front of you won't move. So, okay. So I ended up backing up out of aisles and going around to a different aisle. And, oh God, it's just so difficult to get through Walmart without being right in the face of somebody else. So we don't go to Walmart that much. I order a lot of stuff off Wish or, um... Um, Amazon, sometimes from Walmart, I did order a new vacuum for the pool and it works fantastically and it was super cheap. So I loved that. It's not one of the robots. I still have to move it around myself, but it means I can get in the pool and swish it around until I've got everything and then, you know, feel safe enough to stay in the pool. Um, I still have to skim it every night and every morning, and I still have to um, work with the pump. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The filter, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I'm pretty sure the leak is responsible for that. I don't know where it is, and I don't know what it's doing. So I'm checking all the door jams right now. I don't really see anything that is wrong with it. Um, I can tell you that it's been raining the last few days. Um, the, te the, um, humidity has been like a hundred, I mean, it's 54%. Our normal percent on any given day of the year is 6%. So 54%, nine times as humid as we usually get. So we're dying here. <laughs> I mean, we're just not used to this. I came from Virginia where it's humid all the time. So you'd think I would just adapt back to El Paso. No, I did. I I adapted back to the 6% humidity and now 54. And then all last year, it, um, I can't figure out what I did. Um, last year in the summer from June through August, September 1st is kind of like the cutoff part. It rained the entire three months and it started actually on the day of my mother's funeral. We were outside and we had umbrellas and everything. And I was in a sleeveless dress. I was freaking cold because we're used to 104 right about now. And it was down in the seventies and eighties. So unless you get to the deep afternoon, it's just hot. I mean, it's just cold because there's so much moisture in the air. So, Last summer, big change. 
this one, it wasn't as bad. It was for Bob because of his knee. Anytime the barometric pressures go up and down, um, it can aggravate any injury in a joint. So yeah, he's feeling the pain. Um, I'm not trying to make fun of him or anything. It's just, it's become miserable, you know, to, to move, <laughs> to do anything. I had started clearing off the porch right before it rained. And now my yard is still soaked. I can't move anything else off the porch into the yard because it'll sink down. It's just so wet in, in the backyard, it's still muddy. So like I go out there every morning, I feed all the animals and then I go in and look at the pool and it's just filthy dirty, but I can't stand anywhere near the pool because I will sink down into the mud. So don't want to mess up my suede shoes, you know, and I wear these. <gasps> God, you scared me all the time. I'm sorry, do you need to go through? Uh, well, okay. Are you doing the video? Yeah. Well, I don't want to bother you. Though. Oh, don't worry about it. Okay. Please. Yeah. Hey. So I think everybody needs to know we're all human. I need to use the restroom, so I'll take you okay. down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to go right behind you. Yeah, let me pull that over. There you go. Okay, you can get back through. Yeah. Don't sorry. worry about it. Um, okay, so that was my son. Hope you enjoyed seeing him. He's kind of cute. He's my little sweetie. He's he's always my teddy bear, my my huggy bear. Um, he gives me hugs when he goes to bed. He gives me hugs when he leaves the house. He's just a real cool, a cool young man. He's twenty. Um, he's gonna start sophomore year. I mean, sorry, junior year at um, UT El Paso. So that's cool. Um, so that's it. That's what we're doing. Um, if you've been watching Bailey Sarian's um, Murder, Mystery, and Makeup on Mondays, um, she hasn't done one in a while. She's been dealing with some issues. Plus, she went to Dallas for a couple of weeks, so she could be with her sister when she had her baby. And um, it's just, it's wonderful. You know, she's taking time off for herself. It's self-care, and it's definitely, we all need to do that once in a while. So um, if you're watching, but you haven't seen one in a while and you're really kind of miffed because you just want another one, she is going to start making some in July and um, she's re very positive about it. Um, she kind of went into a funk, felt like, okay, I need to stop everything. I need to recharge and um, take better care of myself. Um, so yeah, so uh, the last six months literally have been very difficult for her. And I'm, I'm just impressed with her that she's decided that, yeah, I have to take some little self-care. So um, anyway, so that's what's going on with her. Um, Mr. Ballin has gone down to one mystery a week, and then he has a podcast called Mr. Ballin. So you can get that on any podcast app you have. And um, those are really good. They are, they are spine, spine tingling, really, because you're just like, oh my gosh. He's very expressive. It's a lot of fun to watch him. Um, there's Dads who watches video games, practice or um, tries out video games, and then he does a Dads Watches where he watches weird stuff on the internet and comments on it. And he's just wonderful about it, and he's funny. And my daughter and I love to watch him. Um, there is one other that I've been watching like constantly for the last two or three weeks and he's called Steve Ho, but it, the, or he calls himself Steve Ho. His name is S-T-E-V-E-J-O-E. -E. So I say Stevie Joe, but that's not what his name is. Um, but anyway, so if you have a chance, go on to his, uh, YouTube channel. He has a lot of funny stuff. Um, some of it is medical. He does a thing from the ER um, that involves three nurses that he plays all three of them. So it's really good editing and it's fun to watch them and they're hilarious. Um, but, um, and then he also watches videos and reacts to them. And some of them are just amazing because he was watching one where there's bad drivers and one of them almost hit a pedestrian and he goes, run, run, <laughs> telling the pedestrian to get out of the way. So we were all laughing because yeah, he can't hear you, but that's what we do. We react. So 
All right. I will see y'all later. I intend to get my hair cut, but I'm liking the, I'm kind of liking the waves right now. <laughs> it's only because it's humid. And as soon as it gets dry again, it'll just go, <laughs> and that'll be it. That'll be when I go get a cut. So, um, I'm going to go for, um, a chin level shag, you know, because my hair is going to up as soon as I get it cut. So yeah, I'm going to do that. I don't know why, just because it's going to grow back because, you know, whatever. I do look better with short hair, um, but I want bangs. You know, I want lots of bangs and um, I feel like I could really get a lot of bangs out of this. <laughs> So, okay. Love you guys. Take care. I will see you again in a week or two and take care. I love you. Bye. Oh, shoot.